Hi there, me again, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So, going to make this a two for video, two for one. Um, so you'll notice I'm clean shaven. First time I've been clean shaven in many, many, many months. Um, a bit daunting using a razor when your right hand can be a little impacted. And got a haircut. So, well shorn. Now, what's this video going to be about? Today we're going to talk about, or at least this, this video we're going to talk about, um, 10 months after my stroke, today's the 23rd of April, I haven't made a video in a little while, um, but a week, it was the Easter holiday here, so, and I'm also off on a week's vacation, left over from last year, so I might be able to spit out a bit more content this week than I would normally, and then I'm going to try to come along with a, probably a two video a week schedule, maybe, we'll see, um, so this video is 10 months after stroke and four months back to work. So 10 months and two days ago, I had the most shittiest event in your entire world that can ever possibly happen. Um, yeah. Things are slowly getting better. Um, I haven't been as diligent as I should be about getting to the gym. I, that's on me. I admit that. Uh, trying to find... And I, and I don't mean to make it sound like I'm trying to make excuses. It's just trying to find the right balance between work and gym. Like, what time do I have to get up at to go to the gym? And right now that's being ridiculously early. And I don't want to be going to the gym at 8 o'clock at night after finishing a shift. So I'm trying to find that balance uh, between work, home, life, gym, all of that can get a bit daunting. Um, so I've basically going to call the, the the fourth month back to work completed because I've only got one more work day left in the month or two more work days left in the month. So we'll just call that completed. Um, I'm not sure about where I sit statistically yet because the month isn't over. I believe I'm in quartile two, I think. I uh, It's either bottom end of two or upper end of three. I really don't know. Um, what I do know is I've had my new hard shell noise canceling headset and that has been amazing. Just amazing so um for the first two months i thought i could just power through it and maybe inoculate myself and i would just get used to being able to filter out the background noise not so much it's, maybe in time it'll come it, it, it's quite possible in another three months i can do it i i honestly don't know but it's a possibility but at this moment in time, the, the neurosensitivity that I have after my stroke is fluorescent lights. At home, I'm fine. I don't have fluorescent lights at home, so I don't have to worry about it. In stores that use sodium lighting, I'm fine. I don't have to worry about it. But fluorescent lights, um, they just play havoc on my brain. So I'm unfortunately restricted to wearing sunglasses at work because I don't have a choice. Um, they, I went to my doctor. I got a note for a proper noise canceling headset. I suggested the one at work. Work was very accommodating, got me the headset that I wanted. Uh, and because I work in a call center, there's these little, we joke and call them tear gas canisters, but they're not, um, along the ceiling. And what they are is essentially like a white noise generator baffle type thing. Well, I can hear that noise. And then you get the other background noise people around you. Um, so these headphones, basically, they eliminate the, the, the white noise generation sound completely, and they deaden enough of the other conversations and sounds around me. I no longer have to take the energy to concentrate, to push out the distractions. So for those of you that have had, had a stroke, neurosensitivity after a stroke, um, due to sensory input, can be a very difficult thing to deal with. Um, some people might have uh, touch, smell, taste. Sadly, I don't have any of those. I'm saddled with uh, noise and uh, light. And sometimes people, but I'll get into that in a video I'm planning on doing about uh, shopping with neurosensitivity. It's a fun time. Um, and I'll leave it in, in the description down below. I'll leave a link on the videos I've done about um, overstimulation and not in a good way after a stroke. So 
they help me not have to focus and and spend effort concentrating to ignore things and i can spend more energy dealing with the person that's called in the customer dealing with at that time and, and, it, and it's been significantly different i'm not leaving work uh feeling fatigued uh, i'm not leaving work noticeably looking fatigued uh i'm coming home from work and being able to be more engaged i'm coming home from work uh being able to be uh more involved um i'm coming home from work and not needing to immediately go up the stairs into bed um i'm coming home from work and i'm able you know to live a life essentially so that has been a, a drastic change a drastic drastic change so and for the better right eventually i'm getting to the point where i'm going to try to test myself to see if i don't need it i, I don't think that'll be anytime soon um i'm still having difficulty at times uh and i've noticed this um happened yesterday i was over uh with my girlfriend's family having easter lunch with them and a couple of weeks ago we were over to a friend's house uh and i noticed there are times during conversations i have difficulty um concentrating paying attention um, and that's due to the the amount of stimulus going on around me um other conversations in the background radio in the background music in the background again in public company i can't really i'm excuse the word dictate can't really dictate to other people well by the way you kind of got to play by my rules now i kind of need you to stop that like i can't really do that that's not how these things work so it's not really proper etiquette to go to a friend's house or your girlfriend's mother's house and say oh by the way we're gonna play this game today no it doesn't work that way so yeah There are still days that are incredibly challenging at times and there are still days that are incredibly easy at times. I'm still having difficulty um dealing with the inconsistencies after my stroke. Because there are days where I can get up and I'm having a great day uh and there are days where I get up and immediately right at the beginning of the day I'm it's it's a tenuous day. Um There was one day where my day started out a bit rocky. And had I not had the noise canceling headset at work, it would have stayed atrocious because I I would have been fighting to to tune out all that background noise. Um Now, when I'm at home, it, when days get rocky, I can just go to bed take medication and just sit in my lazy boy and just zone out put on Netflix or something reading i've noticed is i used to be a voracious reader where i could easily easily crack off you know and i i know i've no i've i've done it um you know be able to crack off a 6 or 700 page book in 2 days you know like if i had a weekend off and there was nothing pressing that needed to be done i could easily finish a book in a in 2 3 days no problem at all um reading can still be difficult at times uh, it's it's not something that other than practice i think will make it any better and then again it may never get better that is yet one of the great joys of having a brain injury it may it just may be it is what it is and it may never get better so there's not much i can do about that what i can do about it is just persevere and for those of you that have had a stroke <clears throat> you know what i mean by that all i can do is try and try again 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 and yet again right because i can remember 
what I could or couldn't do, or I get reminded by people around me what I could or couldn't do six months ago, what I could or couldn't do eight months ago, um, what I could or couldn't do nine months ago. You know, six months ago, there was, I wanted to go back to work. Six months ago, I was not ready to go back to work. There was just, that was not a reality. I wanted to, don't get me wrong, I was ready to go back to work. I was more than willing to go back to work. The reality is that just wasn't going to happen. You know, four months ago, I went back to work. Was it too soon? Maybe. That's just reality. Was it too soon? Maybe. Um, I'll be honest. I needed to go back to work. Neurologically, you're never really going to know, right? Um, and, and it doesn't matter what you do. Uh, I've got a friend of mine who is in Texas, and she's a nurse. I know other people that have had a stroke that uh, one was a teacher. Um, I know various people that have had strokes that are, you know, we're now into basically forced retirement. Some of them were told by their clinical team, you're not going back to work. And that was obvious because they had some serious physical or neurological limitations that would prohibit them from going back to work, or at least going back to the work that they had before their stroke. I'll be honest, I needed to go back to work. That's just the reality of the situation. Um, was I, psychologically, I was pretty much ready. Well, I was motivated. Ready might not be the right word. Neurologically, I was about as ready as I was going to be. Um, the, the, the truth is this. Once you've had a stroke, many things are going to cause you anxiety. Many things are going to be scary. Many things are going to be a test. Right? Be that something as simple as putting on socks, sometimes shoes. Be that learning to cut your food again. But eventually you get to that point where if they're going to let you go back to work, you want to try. right? Because think about the level of self-worth, self-identity um, that you place on being able to go to work and or the type of work you do. And all of a sudden being put in a position where <clears throat> due to no fault of your own, um, you can't, right? You just, just the reality is you can't. And, and for those of you that have had a stroke, that are, you're in the position where you're unable to return to that piece of your former life, I'm sorry. I, I can only imagine, and I do have a limited understanding of what that might be like. Because I know the time I was off work and there was a small period of time where there was a possibility where I wasn't able to go back. Um, I know how discouraging and disheartening that can be. Well, I'm at work now. And every day I show up to work, <clears throat> there's only been a couple of days where I've had to call out um, because of my head didn't like me. Um, and I, I try every day. Uh, regardless of how shitty my day is being at that moment in time. Some days start out decent, and some days don't. Some days start out shitty, some days don't. Some days get better, some days don't. Right? There, I can't predict what's going to happen on any given day. That's just not a possibility. But I try to get through every day, and some are a struggle. Some days, me getting through a day at work, I'm just going to be honest, are, are a struggle. Right? And there's nothing I can do about that. It just, I, I can't make it any better some days. I just have to make it the best day possible. So, what have I learned in the last 10 months? I've learned that there are some people that will definitely be behind you no matter what. I've learned there's people that will smile and nod and you know they just don't get it they just 
don't have the ability to understand what you're going through. Um, I've learned there are people that will be emotional bullies. <clears throat> I've learned there's people that you thought were friends, but they were a friend in name only because when the chips are down, they immediately disappear. But that's okay. They weren't really a friend anyways. They were just sort of a place taker in your life. I've also learned that no matter how shitty today is, the only easy day was yesterday and the only better day can be tomorrow. Because right? there are going to be days that are going to be atrocious. Just, just absolutely atrocious. And there are going to be days that are going to be deceptively easy and they'll be joyous and amazing. You know, and you've got to deal with the bad days and accept them. And you've got to cherish, relish, and just glow in the great days because there's going to be some weeks in the initial, in the initial six weeks after I got out of the hospital, I had some really shitty days and I had some pretty mediocre days and there were some kind of eh days. Um, but ultimately by far and large, once you can get past, and, and this is my experience, someone else may be different. Once I got past about seven or eight weeks, things started getting easier. Right? And then once you accept that you have limitations and you can go to people around you that you trust and they respect where you are and they're more than willing to help without hesitation. Those are the people that you're going to lean on and you're going to learn who those are. But ultimately I'm just grateful to be alive right now. I'm 10 months past my stroke uh, it's been four months since I've been back to work. In two months' time, I'll be out east on vacation. Um, and we'll get more into that later at some point when it's more relevant. But I'm basically, we're going to go to Montreal and then Fredericton and then Halifax and then back again. Uh, going to be a car trip. Should be a fun time. But ultimately... You're going to learn a lot in your post-stroke world. And you're going to learn a few things that you didn't want to learn. And you're going to learn a few things that you had to learn a couple times to actually get the message. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. But it's not that bad, right? There are extremely difficult days. And there are extremely challenging days. And then there are extremely rewarding days because you successfully breached an obstacle and overcame a challenge. So if you like you've been watching on the past 10 months, please like, share, subscribe, hit the little notification bell. You get the little dingy, dingy, dingy when the uh, videos get uploaded. Uh, if you happen to know someone that's either going through their own post-stroke journey or supporting someone going through a post-stroke journey, please point the channel out to them. They may get some benefit out of it. If you uh, would like to contact me directly, you can either leave a comment down below or you can contact me at strokeassalter at gmail.com. I say again, you can contact me at strokeassalter at gmail.com. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that means someone who appears to be befuddled, confused, or lack of balance, uh, someone who's having vision problems, uh, they see in grayscale, they see the world in a little dot, they can't move their eyes left, right, up, or down, uh, they can't see out of one eye, someone who has a, a vis vis visual facial droop, someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all, someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all, someone who's having... Uh, speech problems or slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Um, someone who um, has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has the inability to stand unaided, please immediately place them in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.